structured parametrics. Today I'm going to do a simple parametric arc bridge tutorial. I'm going to start off by setting the original point 000. Then I'm going to split that up into its XYZ components. Now the next I'll have a point here which is my start point and I want the second point of the bridge, the other side of the bridge. So I'm going to do that with a slider to control that parametrically. I'm going to make the slider say 30 meters and I use millimeters normally. I'll make that a round number, don't have to be but I will. Um, now to get to the other point of the bridge, all I need to do is use the component to turn um, the Y and the Z will be the same, but the X I want to add the slider, so I'll just do an addition. I'll add the X of the original point to the new X, which is controlled by my slider. I'll set it at say about 20 meters. Then I'll put that into the component. So now if we zoom out, yes, there, there's our start point and end point of our bridge. Now I'll join those points together with a line, which is basically like the center line of the road. So we want this line here which is creating it from two points. So we've got our original point and our end point. So that's the center line of the road. So the next thing we want to do is create the arc of the bridge. And like anything, um, there's multiple ways of doing this. There's multiple ways of making an arc. Um, I'm going to use the arc SED method, which is start point, end point, and tangent vector, which works quite easily with this setup because I've already got a start point and I've already got an end point. Now I just have to give it a direction. Now I'm going to give it a the Z direction, which is up. I'm going to give it a unit Z direction. So that creates our arc. Now the next thing we want to do is actually have the start of the arc lower than the start point to create that classic bridge type shape. So to do that, I'm just going to use these two points and move them down by a certain amount. Um, I'm going to use a slider again for that. Set up the slider for a maximum of say 5 meters. Actually I'll make it 10 meters. Uh, make it a number. Now I'm just going to move these points, so that's going to be move. I'm going to move both this point and that point. So I did that by holding down shift by the way. You can just um, hold down shift and put two input ports into one component or one input. So I'm going to create, turn my slider into a vector with this um, component and I'm going to do it in Z and I'm going to put that into the transform vector of the move. Now the only thing about this is that I'm, oh, I've let's set a value for it, it's going the wrong direction. So what I'm going to do is, there's two ways I could do it. I could either change the bounds of the um, slider to make it zero to negative. Another way of doing it is in the input for the move translation vector. So I'm going to set up an expression. And I'm going to make the expression minus x. 
So that's just going to make everything that you put into it negative at that point. So as you can see, as I get bigger, it gets more negative. Right, so now that I've got my points that I really want the arc to start from, I can just do those. But the problem is now that you can see I've got a list of two points because I've put two inputs into a single input, uh, two, two outputs into a single input, and therefore I've got a list of two items. So how do I split them into start and end? And the simplest way to do that is just use the list item component which is you get a list and you tell it which indexes to use. Now there is another feature of this component which is if I zoom in I can add another parameter which will be at in index 1. So this without giving this this is default to 0 so that's always going to be 0 but if I add that and I can add more or take more away that will be the second component. So I've actually got the start and end there without providing any uh, lists or uh, inputs to that item there. So I can just put that to start and end. Now I've got an arc that starts where I want it in relation to the road. Right now I've got the road surface and the arc. The next part is how do I create the vertical sections? and start splitting it up into nodes. So the easiest way to do that, or it's quite easy with the road, is I just use the divide, the line divide component. So I'm divert, uh, divide curve. So I've got my, I've got my line, which is the road. I want to divide that curve up. It's defaulted to 10 course I can use a slider to control that which I'll do I'll make it a maximum of say 14 and I'll make it a whole number it should be a whole number um, and that's the number of segments I want to split the road into now vertical components now the hard thing is now how do I translate these <coughs> intersections into the arc? Um, and you do have to be careful with this because if I just split this arc into that same number of points, they wouldn't line up. So for example, I could quickly show you if I just copy and paste this and I just put that arc into the curve, you can see that none of these if I drew a line from that point to that point, it's not going to be vertical. Likewise, that one. Um, so that doesn't work. So we've got to have a bit something a bit more sophisticated. Um, and the way I've done it here, again, there is other ways of doing it, of course, is to use the curve plane intersection component. Now. The curve I want to split up is obviously the arc, <clears throat> and then I want to split it with planes. So I've got to create planes from these points, which is quite easy because I can just go to the planes, and I want a ZY plane, or YZ. And it gives you an origin, an origin point. So if I put these points in, you won't see it because a plane doesn't come up in uh, the view window. But I've now got a, a plane in the YZ axis at every one of those points. So if I put that into there, it will split those that arc wherever it crosses that plane, which is obviously always got to be vertical. So now I can actually join these two sets of lines up um, and the lines will be vertical. So the points are these points and the other points are these points. Whoops. And now 
this is one of the things that happens in Revit, but uh, in Rhino and Grasshopper. It's it's created a nested list, so it's gonna it's cross referencing every point with other, every other point. So if I just flatten that, I've just got a simple list of points and a simple list of points, and that will create um, just the vertical lines. Now you might be happy with that form, with a curved arc. But there's one more thing I'm going to show, and that is, say you don't want this curve, uh, this member to be curved, but you want everything to be made out of straight sections of steel, say. Um, so an easy way to turn a curve into straight lines uh, is to grab the points, which we've already got, and um, ultimately what we want to do is we want to create a line between the first point or each point there's a list of points and the next point along the chain so the easiest way to do that is just to shift the list so I'm shifting it by one now I don't want to wrap because I'll show you what happens so this list of points and the shifted list of points, I'm going to join those together. So it's done what we want, but you've obviously got this additional line that you don't want. So um, that's where the wrap component comes in. Uh, so if I turn this to false, you can see that that line has disappeared. Now if we want to just turn that preview off that uh, arc, so now we can see we've got a bridge uh, that is made out of straight lines. We can control the number of segments. We can control how far the span is and we can control the height of the arc. So there's obviously a lot more you can do with this uh, as a basis and uh, build up a lot more detail um, or modify the arc the, um, to a different shape or anything you want. But that's all I'm doing for today for this quick um, tutorial. Thanks for watching. Leave a like. Uh, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Thanks guys.